know that there's a lot of hurting in the world today, and our world's really crazy right now, but uh, it's nothing like it's going to happen. Amen. And that's why we're studying the book of Revelation, uh, so we'll be aware of it and tell other people about it. Uh, last week in chapter 15, John saw a sign in heaven. It was the tribulation saints in heaven <coughs> praising God. And they were singing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Uh, he also saw uh, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony uh, where the seven angels received their seven golden vials. Uh, and, and the vials, they are the last set of God's judgment and they're full of the wrath of God. In chapter 16, which is what we're in tonight, we'll see these judgments poured out on the world. Uh, and I believe they'll go rather quickly, one after the other after the other. Uh, so that's what we're lo looking at tonight. Uh, Barry, would you care taking off reading and Brother Mike finishing up? I would love to, but I don't have my glasses. Don't have your glasses. <laughs> Eddie, you want to take it off and Brother Mike finish up? Okay. And I heard a great voice out of the... Oh, we're in 16, right? Yes, ma'am. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sword upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God, Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him, and he scorched men with fire. And they were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to his glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, they gnawed, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial from the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of, of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathereth them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, saying from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great sea was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Okay, there's a lot in this chapter, a whole lot going on. Uh, verse 1. I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. 
Now, we know this is God who, who issued the command. Uh, if we remember last week, uh, chapter 15, verse 8, it said the glory of God filled the temple. The glory of God, uh, and no man was able to enter into it, so the only one there to issue the command was God. Verse 2, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. There fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Now notice here who the, who the vial was poured upon. It is the one who received the mark of the beast. Uh, Amen. Now during the tribulation, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people saved, some who refuse to take the mark of the beast. These sores uh, are only affecting the ones who are worshiping the Antichrist. But notice what it was he poured out. It said a noisome and grievous sore. Uh, noisome and grievous, when translated, means evil and wicked. So they're going to get an evil and wicked sore. Probably all over their body, not just one sore. Probably all over their body. Uh, now this this uh, vile judgment reminds us of the sixth plague of Egypt. If you'll turn over to Exodus chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 8 through 10. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to, take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man, and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took the ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, and it became a boil, breaking forth with blames upon man and upon beast. So these sores are going to be boils, <coughs> evil, wicked boils. Anybody here ever have a boil? I have. When I was 15, I had a boil. A painful boil on my rear end. And it hurt. It hurt so bad that my mother took me to Simsonia. There was a woman doctor up there. And she lanced it. If you ever had a boil, when it was lanced, it felt good. So imagine all these people having all these boils all over their body. Constant pain, day and night. I mean, they really hurt. If you ever had one, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, these blains were called blisters. So imagine these boils, when they did break forth, because they were full of pus, and they'd break forth when they finally come to the head, then they would cause blisters all over you. Can you imagine that? That's what these people are going to go through. Now, Job received sore boils from Satan. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Job 2, 7 tells us, So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe this will be the type of boil, the type of evil wicked boil that these people will receive. Constant pain all the time. This constant pain will affect people's temperament. You ever been in pain yourself? A real hurting pain? You're not very easy to get along with, are you? I know my wife's not. I'll pay for that later. Yeah, you will. I'm going to ride you down. Now before we go to another verse, the second and third vile judgments remind us of the first plague on Egypt. Turn back over to Exodus. This time we're going to go in chapter 7. <clears throat> Exodus 
7, we're going to read 17 through 19. And these next two vile judgments remind us of this. <coughs> Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand, and upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, and upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, <coughs> both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. So these next two vile judgments are going to remind us of that. James, also, it also parallels the second trumpet. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. So verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And Doug, this is the same kind of judgment we see in the second trumpet judgment. <laughs> the exception is this. The trumpet judgment, only one third of the sea is affected. That's right. This vile judgment all seas will be affected. Mm -hmm. That's seas and oceans, all the, all the major water. Uh, the trumpet judgment, one third of the life in the seas will be killed. The vile judgment, all the life in the seas will be killed. But I want you to notice something. In the verse it said, the sea became as the blood of a dead man. You notice that? Now, we all know what blood does in our body, right? Blood brings oxygen and nutrients to all the body. But it also carries away carbon dioxide and other waste to the lungs and kidneys to, to get rid of. And we know that when a man dies, his blood stops moving because the heart stops pumping. The blood stops moving. It coagulates. Uh, and coagulates, I looked it up, it says it changes it from a fluid to a solid or a semi-solid. So, will the seas change into a solid or semi-solid state? We don't know. But it said as the blood of a dead man. It didn't say it would turn into blood. But we do know 80% of all living organisms are in the oceans. And I just learned this, 50% of all the oxygen comes from the ocean. I guess it's the, the rolling of the waves. I don't really know how it works. That's just what I looked up. So if we think about it, all the life in the sea will die. Think of the smell and disease that that's going to bring be unbearable. Yeah. Think about the decrease in the percentage of oxygen that's in the air. That's going to be bad. Verse 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood. So the third vial judgment is, all, is, is on all <coughs> the fresh water. Right. The same as the third trumpet judgment. <coughs> There again, the third trumpet judgment, it was only one-third of the water, and it became bitter. Uh, the third vile judgment, all the water, and it became blood. It does not say as blood. It says it became blood. So, does this mean when we go to the kitchen and open a faucet, we're going to get a, a glass of blood? what the Bible says. We don't know for sure, but that's what the Bible says. I believe we will. And if we look at 
verses 5 through 7, we'll see why. Verse 5, And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So there's your justification for the water being turned into blood. I really believe it will be. Uh, and this is the answer to the cries of the saints which were under the altar. Y'all remember that? Turn back over to Revelation 6. <coughs> Look at verse 9 and 10. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwelt on the earth? So there's your justification for it. Turn over to Matthew 23. Jesus even spoke of it. Matthew chapter 23. We're going to read verses 34 through 36. <clears throat> and this is Jesus talking. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. And some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them in, from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchius, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So Jesus even foretold of this. Amen. And I believe that's what we're going to see when that vial is poured out. Verses 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. <laughs> so this fourth vile judgment is poured out on the sun. Reminds us of the fourth trumpet judgment, where the sun was darkened a third of the day. A third of the sun was darkened a third of the day. And this is just the opposite. Now the sun is going to be able to scorch men. <coughs> Malachi warned of it. Flip over to Malachi 4. Last book before you get to the New Testament. It's easy to find. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And that day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Right. So this shouldn't be anything new to us if we study the Bible. Now how's this going to happen? We really don't know. Will the Earth's orbit change somehow and us get closer to the sun? Will, will, the, will the axis of the Earth tilt? What, what, what if the ozone around this planet was removed? That would sure scorch us. We don't know how it's going to happen, but we know it's going to happen. Oh, it is. Yes, sir. And keep this in mind. With the boils that's already been placed on everybody that worship the beast, with the scorching heat 
and no water. Can you imagine the suffering the people are going to go through? Remember all the judgments that happened before. I should have got the board up tonight like Edie told me. But look what the people did. They blasphemed in the name of God and repented not. It doesn't make any sense. Verses 10 and 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. This fifth vial judgment is poured out on the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. This again reminds us of the fifth trumpet judgment. Revelation 9 2, that's where we find it, says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and that's Satan, and there arose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So this judgment is going to darken the seed of the beast. <coughs> The fifth vial judgment also reminds us of the ninth plague on Egypt. Turn back over to Exodus chapter 10. And I've read this several times. But that's why it's called the living word, because I found something else out. Amen. Exodus chapter 10. Verses 21 through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Amen. Notice in that passage that, um, that this darkness affected all of Egypt, but not the land of Goshen where, where the uh, Israelites were. This is going to be just the opposite. There's going to be darkness on the seat of the beast, but light everywhere else. So it's not worldwide. It's just going to be on the seat of the beast. So where is this seat of the beast? We don't really know. Again, this is prophecy. We do know his image will be in the temple, which will be in Jerusalem. Could that be the seat of the beast? Perhaps. Or maybe the seat of the beast will be in Rome, or where we believe uh, that the false prophet will be leading the one world religion. I believe it will be Rome where he's leading from. Is that the seat of the beast? Okay. We don't really know. But I believe it will be Jerusalem. And we'll, hopefully we'll see that later. And the, the verse we let, read just a while ago, Exodus 10, 21, at the end of it it says, The darkness over Egypt was darkness which may be felt. That is what God showed me this time when I read. I never realized that. Y'all ever been in a place so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face? Yeah. Mammoth cave. Mammoth cave, yes ma'am. Couldn't you feel it? Yeah. Imagine what it'll be like. Let's say it is Jerusalem. Yeah. You've got sores all over you. Just been scorched until it got dark. There's no water. And now you can just feel the darkness around you. It'd be a terrible time, won't it? <laughs> but it also says the people in the kingdom of the beast will blaspheme God and not repent. Right. That's how hard people's hearts will be at that time. <laughs> 
We've got 15 minutes and a lot of verses left. I'm going to stop here and, and continue it on next week because I don't think, unless y'all want to stay till about 8 o'clock, we've got several pages to go. So I'm going to stop here and we're going to ask if you got any questions. Yes, ma'am. We want to be here tonight. No, ma'am. Be an unbeliever. Anybody got any comments? Got a comment? Yes, sir. <coughs> you know, you think about uh, the world and how evil things have gotten and stuff, but if you look around in this room right here, I can't imagine not a single person in here being disciplined by God Himself and having that evidence in front of them and. And someone being like, curse you anyway. Like, how could you, how could you know without a shadow of a doubt his divine benevolence was trying to tell you something and teach you something and still curse him anyway? I, I don't understand that. Well, every, everybody here, I believe, is saved. They've been exposed to the Word of God for years or, or, or at least for a little while. Um, Notice when you try to witness to different people the reaction you get. Right, yeah. It's, it's not so much as like, oh, I'm not interested, but like, I specifically don't want you to have anything nice. I don't want you know, nothing nice about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but people who are not exposed to God, uh, this book here, if people are not <coughs> exposed to it, this is a hard book to sell to somebody. Yes, sir. There's a God from heaven that come down and he died and came back to life. Anybody here ever see anybody come back to life? <laughs> no. Anybody ever see a donkey talk? No. It's in here. Yeah. There's all kind of things in here that's real hard to, to sell to somebody. I remember I had a conversation with a woman who was not, does not believe in Jesus. And I was like, you know, I think maybe kind of seems like magic does exist through us, you know, like we can we can really make things happen that if, you, if you're observing from up here, you know, animals and all this other stuff can't do. And we're normal to it, but I, I would assume it would be magic, you know, miracles performed through us. And, uh, and she's, she looks at me, she's like, yeah, when you believe in Jesus, obviously you, you believe in magic. You know, like, like what? All yeah, it, it's hard to get people to, to understand uh, because the biggest part of this uh, is faith. Amen. You have to have faith in seeing things unseen. I think that's how the Bible words go. Uh, Katie and I were talking a while ago. It's a shame you can't get lost people in here that are sure of this. You know, how could you? How could you? I don't know. Well, there's a man at work. Uh, I've been working on him for three or four years now. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to be around it. He just... They just don't want to hear it. What, what makes them feel that way? Did they grow up going to church as a child? No, I don't <coughs> know. I do not know. To me, I feel like it. what's really bad is when children have never grown up in church or with families who believed in God at all. And as they become closer to being adults, they, of course they, they don't understand it and they don't want to deal with it. I think one thing, Cheryl, I think, and I may be wrong, but I think we're born with a need to worship. I really do. Um, and when you start presenting the gospel to somebody, they already know that, that they're going to have to turn away from certain things. Amen. And they don't want to. And that's why they'll fight real hard not to. They don't want to hear it. That's my belief. Jackie? Oh, that hurt go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I have two different comments. And one comment on that, because I think it's so important before we do witness to people, is um, I found to pray for the Holy Spirit to go in front of us. Especially my generation, um, people are really hardened, and a lot of people have been hurt by the church. Um, I was one of those, <coughs> and uh, it can make you turn away. And so, when the Holy 
experience the um, what's it called the red tide. Mm-hmm. Um, are y'all familiar with that? Mm-hmm. Um, now when I was younger, when you go to Florida, it's a certain tide. It's a it's a type of algae that sits in the water, um, and it kills all the fish, and all of them wash up on the shore. And um, it is the worst smell, and that's not even a fraction of what will be killed. But yeah. that smell alone um, just I couldn't even really fathom what it can be. Yeah, I don't I don't think we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I want to say something uh, on what you just said about uh, a lot of people getting turned away because of bad experiences at church. The church is the earthly representation of Jesus Christ. Uh, what what the what the world thinks of Jesus, a whole lot of it relies on what they think of the church. Mm-hmm. It's how we act, how we talk, uh, how we treat them. How we treat them, yes, sir. I just wanted to throw that out there. Go ahead, Brother Robert. Jamie, I have, I have never in my life not believed in God. I was in Detroit, Michigan. I was five years old. Had the bumps. And the second day, Mama come in and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying to God. That he would help me. Now, I may be completely wrong, but Jeremiah, first chapter in the seventh verse, <coughs> says he was born in the Spirit of God in his mother's womb. And I think I was. I, I, <coughs> ever since I can remember, I've always believed in God. And I'm telling you, you can ask her, I'm a walking miracle. They told me I would not live. When I got colon cancer in 1990, uh, he said, It's already in the new colon wall. It's in all your left lobes. Uh, he says, All over your body. He said, We can't, we're going to try to treat you with chemotherapy and radiation. And maybe you'll live two years. Well, I got a God in heaven mm-hmm. that took it away. Amen. 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 If, if, every, if anybody's ever been touched like that, then you know he's real. Yes, sir. There were people praying for me all over the United States of America. And a year later, after 40 day, 42 days of radiation where they burned a hole in me, I had a year and a half of chemotherapy, and he took it away. And I'm a walking miracle. Not only that, but he does it again when he cut my throat two years ago twice. So, I, I'm a miracle. John and I were talking today. I don't know. What did you say that guy's name was a year ago? Bill Murphy. Bill Murphy. Y'all know Bill Murphy? Take pictures? Yeah. 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 His, his whole ear's gone. He was in Vietnam when I was. And that's what happened to him. The Agent Orange got him. And he's the happiest guy in Marshall County. I have never seen it, a frown come on his face because he tells me God's still working. Amen. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not cotton. If we could get the lost in here, but let them hear and see what this Bible is. And, and like you said, you just found that. This Bible is amazing. Every time you pick it up and read, you say, well, I don't remember reading that before. Yes, Something sir. new. Point jumped out at you. Amen. Yes, and I, I'll tell you before I forget, I appreciate <laughs> you doing this. Amen. And I think you've done a great job. Amen. Every night. Amen. 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 And I, I have a big clock. <laughs> Any more comments, questions? Brother Mike. <laughs> Quickly, it all comes down to belief. Yes. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine with them. Satan wants to keep them blinded. Yeah. Uh, another verse to keep in mind, as horrible as it is going to be uh, of them, you do not want to be here. Mm-hmm. If you're lost, you've never accepted Christ. But one thing we have learned here, and we've learned it even in this community, natural disasters, pain, physical pain, 
does not save man's soul. Right. They will endure it and hope for a better tomorrow. And so that stubbornness is because they are unbelievers. And no amount of pain can save your life. It takes that drawing and working of the Holy Spirit. That goes back to praying for those lost before you witness to them. Amen. Uh, but just very quickly, just uh, here in Revelation 21, verse 7, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I'll be his God, and he'll be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. <laughs> Notice the second thing he mentions is just, just by being an unbeliever. Uh, <clears throat> there's an old uh, testament scripture said there was a great storm but it said God was not in the wind that's right amen and First so game. all of these That's all right. these natural disasters uh, that come about upon man and physical pain are not going to change their soul that's right uh, and so we have to pray for that opportunity to lead them to the Lord and one thing that we need to to expect to do is to do what you're doing uh, go out to reach the lost. They're not just going to come here for those of you that are going out to your job site, that's going out on the way to your doctor, whatever that you're doing, whatever way you're going out, it's how we reach the lost. But if we sit back with our arms open, they're not going to just come. Amen? Right. Continually, the Bible says, go out. Go. Get away from your comfort zone. Get away from my comfort zone and tell people about Christ. And so if you're watching by YouTube and Facebook, You've never accepted Christ. That's a great need that you have. And we don't want you to be here uh, when this occurs. And uh, we, we're not going to be because we're going to be gone. Amen. And uh, we, we're going to be with Christ. And so we certainly would want that for you to uh, realize that you're a sinner and to be willing to admit it. Ask Christ to come in your heart and save you and forgive you, and he will do exactly that. Yes. And uh, so uh, please do that tonight exactly where you're sitting, where you're standing, wherever you're at. Please do that. And then make sure you let somebody know so they can praise the Lord with you. So <laughs> angels in heaven rejoice, and we can rejoice down here when God yeah. saves somebody. Amen. Amen. Thank you for this wonderful crowd tonight. And by the way, Jamie, I went to that same doctor, uh, that same female doctor in Simpsonia, and uh, I need to get a shot. And, uh, of course, she said, uh, you need to bury your hip. And then she said, look at the horsey on the wall. Uh, I said, I don't have to look at the horsey. Just give me a shot. Amen. You know? So, uh, anyway, she, <laughs> I think I was in my mid-30s, and she wanted me to look at the horsey. You know? <laughs> Let's pray. God, we, yes, ma'am. Let's pray then. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Uh, God, we thank you for the teaching that we've learned uh, from Jamie and God. Every time when we get done, it always turns to you and about salvation and about the punishment for sin, God. It, it, it's as old as the world itself. And God, it's not going to change because you're not going to change. There's no other way to get to heaven except through your son, Jesus Christ. You said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So those that are watching, thanks by their good works or by their religion or by church membership, can save them. They need to bow their knees right where they're at right now, Lord. Show them that they're lost and poor and to let them know how much you love them. That you died for them on the cross. But oh, thank you. We're going to celebrate that you rose again and Amen. defeated death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. Send us about our way. And again, send us out. Mm -hmm. Send us out, God. Lay somebody on our heart that, and that takes us out of our comfort zone yes. that we would speak to them about you and be willing to face the result and be prepared in the word and on our knees. Mm -hmm. In your name, Jesus Christ, we ask it all tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen.